People often ask if a food is good or bad for me. But to answer that one question, you really need to answer three questions. You need to think about the nutrients in the foods. And if I change, do or do not eat that food, how is that going to change my nutrient intake? Then you have to think about, well, what biochemical parameter of the body would change in response to that? And then finally, how is that biochemical parameter influencing our risk for disease? Our lipids and looking at our, our lipids in our foods and in our body are a classic example of trying to answer those three questions to get at if something is good or bad for me. So our first question that we would think about lipids in our foods, we might think about the nutrients of fatty acids. And how if I ate donuts instead of peanut butter or, or went from donuts to peanut butter, what would be the change in my fatty acids? That's the first question. And then you would think about what biochemical parameters might change. Well, our lipoproteins. Those are produced in the body, and the amounts and the types would be changing based upon the type of nutrient we consume. And then the disease that we might think about would be heart disease, and how our change in biochemical uh, values of bi lipoproteins increase our risk. So fatty acids to lipoprotein to a risk to heart disease. Before we look at that in some specific examples, let's take a look at some good news and bad news when it comes to cardiovascular disease. This first graph is looking at the mortality rate uh, uh, in United States around heart disease and specifically looking at this red line. We're looking from about the 1900s to pretty current data here. And you can see what ha happened. We had a rise in the incidence of heart disease, a peak in the 1940s to the 1970s, and then sometimes not talked about enough is this really good news. We've had a significant drop in the rate of mortality from heart disease since about the 1970s. But if we look at the leading cause of death in the United States in recent data, we can see that the number one cause of death is still heart disease. We need to do better. The American Heart Association and the uh, a National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute are two large groups that look at our risk for heart disease and strategies to reduce our risk. So here are a list of those recommendations. Some of them you probably know. Maintain a healthy weight, stop smoking, manage your stress, be physically active, and then last but definitely not least is to follow a heart healthy diet. In fact, research shows that 45% uh, of the disease burden associated with cardiovascular disease is associated with a poor diet. So changing your diet can make a difference. Now when it comes to specific recommendations for a heart healthy diet, there are things we need to increase and things that we need to decrease. Things that we should increase would include fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, whole grains. Things to decrease would be re refined carbohydrates, sugar, especially sugar sweetened beverages. Those are associated with higher levels of blood insulin and high levels of blood insulin are associated with increased inflammation. So that would be something we want to avoid. Moderate amount of alcohol, still doing research on that, but that is the current recommendations. And then last but not least, dietary lipids to improve your dietary lipids intake. If we think about the whole category dietary lipids, we think about sterols and fatty acids. Lowering dietary cholesterol is still a recommendation, but there is some controversy around it, so I've added in the word here, maybe. And then the message around fats, moderate fat, good fat, and the type of fat really makes a difference. There are some fats that have an adverse effect that increase our risk, and those include saturated and trans fatty acids. But there are types of fats that are beneficial, unsaturated, poly and mono, and those omega-3 fatty acids. And so we want to more have more of them. And let's take a look at both of those uh, more specifically. If we look at what is being recommended, so we're trying to get to those three questions. What would change in our dietary intake of nutrients, change in bio, uh, biochemical uh, parameters? So if we change a dietary factor, then how will that change a health uh, parameter? So if we recall, we're going to use those words that are commonly used with LDL, it's a lipoprotein that we sometimes call bad cholesterol because it increases our risk for cardiovascular disease. And then we sometimes call HDL, the good cholesterol, because it reduces our risk when we have more of that for cardiovascular disease. So we're going to see that dietary factors influence these types of lipoproteins. I'm going to start with dietary cholesterol. As I mentioned earlier, that it is a little bit controversial. So what's about 
eggs. I'm going to call that what about eggs? Because eggs are our number one source of dietary cholesterol. Definitely not the only one. Any food that is going to be rich in um, fat, uh, not fats, in sterile, so it's going to be animal-based foods, are going to have cholesterol. But eggs are probably the one of the more concentrated ones. One egg has about 185 milligrams of dietary cholesterol. And the dietary guidelines used to recommend you keep that below 300 milligrams of dietary cholesterol a day. So you can see one to two eggs would put you over that recommendation. But they're backing away from that now. And there's really two reasons why. So let's take a look at why dietary cholesterol is not a key factor in the level of body cholesterol. So keeping those things separate. One of the reasons why is down here looking at the rate of absorption. Now here would be the amount of dietary cholesterol in a typical diet, this first bar graph. So the average intake of cholesterol is about 250 milligrams each day. And if we look at only about half of that, 40 to 60 percent of all the cholesterol you put in your mouth actually gets across that GI tract and into the body. So that's represented here in this graph over a uh, bar graph on the right and this is looking at the amount of cholesterol absorbed and that that is produced every day. This part of this bar is the amount of cholesterol produced by the body each day. Cholesterol is not an essential nutrient. Our body can make it, our liver makes it and we make much more cholesterol than what we consume. And there's clear evidence that if I eat a little bit more, I eat another egg or two, that our body will actually produce a little bit less. It's not perfect, a one-to-one, -one, but it's pretty close. So if we look back at some ideas, if we're going to have a diet that's rich in dietary cholesterol, what will happen to these biochemical parameters? We'll see, I'm going to put just a little arrow here, maybe a modest increase in total cholesterol. And here's we're going to have just modest increase in, in all of these different types of lipo lipoprotein. But it seems to have not much of an effect on one's risk for cardiovascular disease. Let's, let's take the next one. If we're going to look at a diet that's rich in saturated fats, we're going from sterols to these fatty acids. And look at saturated fat to begin with. Now if we recall, what are the types of foods that are going to be rich in saturated fat? So we have here a graph of looking at the fatty acid distribution in different types of foods. And the, the red represents saturated fat. You can see the foods that are rich in saturated fat, cheese, butter, uh, beef. These are going to be animal foods and solid at room temperature. So when we have more of that in our diet, what will happen to our biochemical parameters here is that we know that there's an increase in total cholesterol, there's an increase in the LDL, and maybe a modest or no impact on HDL. So it really makes that LDL increase and probably that's what is more indicative of raising blood cholesterol coming from saturated fat than we have from uh, dietary cholesterol. It's more important. Let's look then at what happens if we take these unsaturated fats in our diets. And, and what will happen there is that there is a drop in total cholesterol, a drop in LDL, but there might be an increase in this HDL. And so now we've got a really good combination of what we want, less LDL, more HDL. So that's a positive outcome. This graph here below is looking at what happens when we replace saturated fat with other types of fats. Because that's generally what happens when we re have less of, of cheese in our diet, we're going to have something else. We're going to replace it. So we have to think about replacement, not just a drop or an increase of one or the other. And this graph does a great job of, of explaining that, that change that will happen. So to orientate you to this graph down here, this zero line represents kind of the the amount if you have this amount of saturated fat. And then if we go to the right, if we have a bar that's going to the right, it's increasing one's risk for cardiovascular disease. So we don't want that. And if you have a bar going to the left, it's going to decrease your risk for cardiovascular disease. So if we replace saturated fat, think butter, cheese, and beef, with trans fatty acids, so processed fats, margarines, um, uh, processed um, foods such as uh, popcorn, microwave popcorn sometimes has a lot of trans fatty acid in it. That was really negative. It actually increased 
the incidence of your risk for cardiovascular disease. But look what happened when we replaced that mono and polyunsaturated fat in, for that saturated fat. We have this drop in your risk for cardiovascular disease. So the message here is moderate fat, good fat, and mono and poly and unsaturated fat are those good fats. The last one here I want to let, look at, it. what happens when you go on a low-fat diet? That was the message so frequently given in the 1980s and 90s, just go on a low-fat diet. The thought was it would just drop all our cholesterol, and that's with thought to be a, a positive thing. And we do see that. We see a drop in total cholesterol. There's a drop in LDL, but there's also this drop in HDL. And when you look at the overall risk, again back down at this lower graph here, of what happens if we replace saturated fat with refined starts and sugar, so white bread and soda and those types of foods, we almost see no impact on the overall risk for cardiovascular disease. When we replace it with whole grains, we do see a, a, a positive outcome. We have a lower risk for cardiovascular disease. So the message here is that we want to have less saturated fat, less trans, but we also want to have less of that starch, uh, refined carbohydrates and sugars. And we want more of the monopoly and more of the whole grains. Let's look at this in more uh, examples of specific foods. So the impact of changing one food to the other and thinking about there are three questions. What change in nutrients, what change in health parameters, and then that risk for uh, a specific disease. In this instance, we're going to go from a high fat olive oil to a non-fat food, so going just to low fat. Let's go and look at the graph that looks at the fatty acid distribution. And here's the one that looks at olive oils, olives. And you can see it's very rich in the yellow, which is the monounsaturated fat. There is some saturated, <clears throat> there is some uh, mono, and a little bit of omega-3 fatty acid. But really, the biggest one is going to be mono. Again, that was a little bit of, of polyunsaturated. So we go back to our questions. So what's going to change? We would see a little bit drop in saturated fat, a big drop in the amount of monounsaturated, a little bit here, a little bit here. And then dietary cholesterol, I have to think about that there would be no change. So we're looking at the change of these lipids that are, are happening. The reason there's no change is because olive oil is a plant food. Plants have no cholesterol. So the amount of fat, cholesterol is not coming with the amount of fat. And we just have the, these fatty acids that are being changed. Second question, what, what change would we see in those biochemical parameters? Well, we know it's going to happen. The LDL is going to drop, but so is the HDL. So our change in our risk for cardiovascular disease, you would probably have no change or a slight increase in your risk for cardiovascular disease. Let's go back to see why. It's because, um, wrong graph there. Uh, we are looking at this one looking at this change right here because if you go to a really low fat product like a fat free salad dressing you're probably going to have a little bit more refined starch and sugars let's look at another one this is one where we're going from butter to olive oil so what changes let's think about our change in dietary fatty acids to begin with so here's olive oil you know that that one is and let's come down and look at butter Here's butter. So we can see what's going to happen if we go from butter to olive oil. We're going to have a drop in saturated fat. There's going to be actually a, an increase in the mono, monounsaturated, and really not a lot of change, but a little increase in the green, and almost no change in the omega-3 fatty acids. So let's answer our three questions. So first one, are we going to see? We're going to see a drop when we go from butter to olive oil, we're going to have less saturated fat, much more mono, a little bit of more, no change in the uh, omega-3 fatty acid. They both have very little in it. Dietary cholesterol, well, we will see a modest drop. Butter's from an animal-based uh, food, so we'll have a little bit of cholesterol, and olive oil will have none. What will this do on our change in our blood parameters, our, our lipoproteins? Well, it's going to drop our LDL, and it actually will increase our HDL. So what does that do for our risk? It's going to reduce your risk for cardiovascular disease. Coronary heart disease would be that abbreviation. So when we think about is a food good or bad, we have to think about those three things. What nutrient might change? What 
biochemical parameter in the body would change, and then link that. How is that linked with a specific uh, disease? And our uh, thinking about lipids in our foods and our risk for cardiovascular disease are classic examples of answering those three questions.